Llama Acrylic Painting Time Lapse and Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Paper. Hi guys! In today's video, I am going to be showing you a llama painting that I just finished, and I named this painting Fernando. And if you guys, a while back, I had some videos with my husband, and it's, he doesn't think this llama painting should be named Fernando. I don't remember what name he thought, but I've been calling it Fernando since then, mostly just because every time every time I do it, he rolls his eyes. But I hope you guys like Fernando as much as we do. Obviously, we are llama fans. And this one over here, big drama llama, in case anybody is curious. Aren't you? Are you a drama queen? Yeah! Yeah! So anyways, I hope you guys like this video, and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So I started out the background with a layer of a metallic green, and I say a layer, but it was actually five. If you guys ever work with metallic paint, it is a kind of a headache because you have to apply so many layers to get it to be opaque and not streaky that, yeah, five layers. But then I'm going to be painting his eyes first, mostly because I was so eager to paint those big, beautiful, beautiful little eyes there that I could not wait. So I started out with the eyes, adding first a layer of charcoal paint and then doing some shadowing with black, lots of highlights, really subtle highlights, almost kind of like a smoky look throughout the eye. And I also added some highlights in there with that metallic green color that I used for the background, which one thing makes the eyes look really sparkly and really pretty. Plus if he's in this green environment, he probably would have some green reflections showing in his eyes. So now with a variety of browns and creams, I quickly would just like to apologize for the bird squawking in the background. She is asking me why we haven't gotten up and gotten dressed yet. But uh, <laughs> I've got the background layer of my paint down and really rough. I didn't make it smooth looking at all. I just roughed in all those colors over his neck. And then I'm going to take and I'm going to be adding some more detailed little fur tufts throughout the entire neck, shoulder, chest area of my llama. So I took and I added some highlights and some low lights and these little fur tufts, you kind of make them go each direction going back and forth. They do not all lay flat. Llamas are so fluffy and wooly that their, their fur kind of sticks together. So it makes these little points. I mean, it depends on the way that their wool is cut, of course, and how long their fur is and all of that stuff. But make him look really nice and really soft and really fluffy and just keep adding those little tufts of fur and vary up your color c colors a little bit so the llama that i was looking at has some sections where he's actually fairly red tone and then somewhere it's more of like a like a beige taupe color and I didn't necessarily bring too much of that beige taupe color into this, but you do have freedom to change up the fur color by section, which I showed mostly on his face, but his neck did have some various, so even just a little, a little bit more of a red tone in certain areas you can do. You can just have fun with it and do whatever you like. Obviously there are different colors of llamas, so yours does not have to look just like mine. It can look however you like. And if you happen to be lucky enough to be friends with a llama, you could do a portrait of that llama in particular. And so I'm just gonna keep going. And I also really quickly wanna mention the size of this canvas. It is, uh, oh, now that I say I'm gonna mention it, it's 12 by 36, which is a really awesome size of canvas. I've also painted, I did a painting a little over a year ago that was, I guess it was probably close to two years now, that was a toucan with all kinds of fruit. And that painting was on the same size canvas. And it's kind of a canvas I like to have on hand just in case I have an idea that sparks because it is, I don't know, I really like painting on canvases that aren't your traditional, your traditional shape. So there I've got going all the way up his, all the way up his neck, all the way up to where he's got like his chin hair that's longer. Just keep working your way up until you get to that point and filling in all of that. The, his neck actually was the most time consuming part of this painting. I spent three days on it, which I know that sounds like it'd probably be like 30 hours, but that's not the case. I only have time to do these things after Miss Melody goes to sleep. So that's like two hours each day, so maybe six hours on the neck, give or take. And it depends on how late I'm willing to stay up, which depends on how into it I am, which is usually if I'm painting, I could keep myself awake for a very long time. After I've got the neck done, I'm going to go and I'm moving on to his ears using the same colors, making it a little bit darker in the actual inside of the ear. One of this guy's ears though is turned to the side just a pinch, so that one you don't see too much of that inside of the ear, but the other ear, the one that I'll be working on in just a moment, does have a little bit more of that. Same thing, these ears are not all the same color. The one is much more of a cream all the way throughout the whole thing. And then the other ear, this one that I'm starting just now, is got some darker colors on it and then it has a really red streak in it, 
or I say red, but it's more like a terracotta color. It's not like red, red. So add all of your little fur texture. The fur on the ears is a little bit longer. It's a little less wool like a texture. It's a bit more silky. So you can use longer lines, a little bit smoother lines, and you can definitely get that, that feel into that. Just add the ears. And as I said before, the ears aren't facing the same direction. So obviously their shape is going to be a little bit different from one ear to the next. Same thing. If you have some, I think I, I don't know, whenever I paint an animal like this, I have so many reference photos. I think I used six different llamas for this one. So now I'm going to be adding the two colors. Like I said, on the top of his head, he's got more than one color going on. So I added the back one first and then I went through and I'm going to be adding just that first base layer of color down on the face, like on the cheeks and on his nose, not in his mouth necessarily or on his actual nose nose, but down the bridge of his nose and so on. And then adding that lighter colored fur that goes over his eyes a little bit. And like I said, if you guys are curious, I used six reference photos. And if you want to know where I get my reference photos, I get them from a website called Pixabay. And if you guys are curious at all about my prep for making a painting and where I find photos and how I sketch and all of that stuff that's all skipped in these videos, I do have a video that is specifically on that. So go through and add the rest of your little texture on your fur, starting in the same basic process that I went through and added the first layer to it, beginning with that darker, more ruddy color fur near the ears, kind of working through all of that. Adding all of this, this fur is a little bit between the fur on the chest and the fur on the ears, so it's a little bit more of that wooly, clumpy texture to it, but it's also longer and still a bit thinner, a bit silkier than the chest and neck fur. So add all of that going down, keep adding sections. And this, when you're painting this, it's like little section by little section by little section, but build it. So like for this one, you're going to want to work from the back moving forward. And for the neck, as you saw, I worked from the bottom of the canvas going up. So keep in mind which sections of fur are going to lay on top of other ones so that you paint them in a way that it makes sense that you don't have to be very careful about not covering something up. You can just paint. And if it overlaps a little bit, that's fine because it's supposed to. Just keep adding all of those. And another funny story, and it was right about this point in the painting when I was working on it. And like I said, I have very limited time spans when I get to paint. So I like to not waste any of it. I like to really utilize as much of my free time as I possibly can. But my nephews, I have, uh, well, I have a lot of nephews, but two of the nephews that I had there, uh, they're 11 and 12. And they, at the time, were really big into Fortnite. It has since been banned from their household, but that's a little irrelevant, but they were really big into Fortnite, and there is a rainbow llama, apparently, or a purple llama or something, and my nephew, who was 11, looked at the canvas, and he looked at me, and he goes, you're painting a llama? And I said, yeah. And he goes, well, it's the wrong color. And I looked, I'm like, what do you mean it's the wrong color? He goes, well, it should be purple. And I just rolled my eyes at him, because he's goofy, but he was pretty insistent that this llama should have been purple, and obviously, I was doing something wrong. So anyways, I just thought that was funny, because yeah. And I also, that's kind of something that one of my things is I don't like people to comment on my paintings until I'm finished with them. So I don't really like to show them to people. I usually don't even like to tell people what it is that I'm painting. So I'll have my canvas and I'll hide it. I'll be working on it. And if somebody happens to walk behind me, or as you can see, there's, I'm in the kitchen and there's people working on stuff and getting food and stuff constantly around me. But I don't like to get comments or somebody say, well, what are you doing with that part? Or what does this, what is this going to be? I really hate that. So I felt really weird painting with all those people in the house, especially when my sister and my nephews and everything were making cupcakes next to me. So that was definitely interesting. So continue working on your llama and obviously on his chin and his face, it's longer fur as well. And again, this also depends on how your llama's wool is cut because there are so many different, different ways and different reasons to do it different ways. So I'm just going to keep working on this and on the face, on the facial fur, it's got some more of that ready tone on it. I really wanted that tuft of cream color fur that's on his, like right on his forehead to be really kind of bright and like, whoa, look at that shock of, shock of cream colored fur. So I wanted everything, all the surrounding fur to be a bit darker. So keep adding that and just add, you know, you can take this as far as you want. I... I personally feel I sometimes over detail things and that's kind of something I work on avoiding at times because I will just keep adding stuff until it's like that looks crazy. 
but just you know it's whatever your style is so now i'm going to be working on his mouth i've got his lips done and i'm going to be working on his teeth make his teeth nice and yellowed and crooked and all of that great stuff and you can just keep adding little bits to it uh, his teeth aren't very straight and clean he had no cosmetic dentistry at any point in his life so make them look nice and nice and goofy that's kind of part of the joy of this particular painting that smile the crooked smile with the teeth sticking out that was actually the entire inspiration of this painting i wanted to paint that mouth because i thought it was amazing then add his chin fur and his chin fur sticking down from that so just add all of that and there's a little shadow under where his lips are so there's a little bit more of like a shaded in area right there as you can see and continue adding all of the different little fur sections on his chin and then after that you can go through and do his nose so his nose is going to be a darker charcoal color or darker gray and then after that you're going to add some fur going over the top of his nose which is interesting that llamas have like a, a very furry little nose but you can still the fur isn't as dense as on the rest of their body so you can see their skin through it i'm going to be adding the fur to his upper lip nose under area little tiny lines for this very short short lines Let's just add those little cream cream colored lines going down over that all of the fur that's pretty much left except for that tuft of cream colored hair on the top of his head are going to be shorter lines it's a little bit more of a velvety texture it doesn't have that long woolly or silky feel that the rest of his fur does so you want to use teeny tiny lines for this and i'm using this is a nail art brush because they're made to be used with to make really tiny lines and they work really well for that so i'm using a nail art brush for this and i'm making all of those tiny tiny lines it's almost to the point where it's closer to making like little dots than it is even making fur like lines so keep working this little area does take some time and it takes some patience and you just keep have you have to just keep working on it and getting the little sections done and keep working up the bridge of his nose until you get to where it's going to tuck in underneath his mop of hair. Let's keep going up, 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 up. There you go. And had somewhere it starts to get a little longer on the sides of his nose. So just kind of adding a little bit more of that fur. And same thing like with his ears, his mouth, since it is offset, that area on the sides of his nose isn't going to be uh, symmetrical from side to side it has a little bit more like he's twisting up his face and he's making kind of a funny face then I'm going to be doing the section that I have been waiting for the top of his head that little tuft of cream colored hair and don't be shy about adding hair coming up coming over his eyes some of the llama photos I was looking at you couldn't even see their eyes because it had so much hair over the top of them that you know you really can just add some of that nice furry furry curtain going over their eyes and the other thing I wanted to make sure to mention is that around the perimeter of your painting, make sure that you have plenty little furry lines so that there's no straight line, there's no smooth line, there's no painted line around that outside border. You want it to have just little teeny tiny fluffy lines. And this llama is kind of backlit, so if you look, the middle of it has a shadow on it, just a little bit. It's, it's subtle. He's in a field or something, so he's plenty lit, but got just like a little bit of a highlight right around the border which makes him stick out or pop off that metallic green background really really well so he doesn't get lost in there sometimes with those different colors it can distract away from the painting so much so adding that little highlight around the border of it really does help and then after you have that add his whiskers and then he is all done i absolutely love llamas as you can see melody has a llama hat that was bought up uh, well before she was born well before she was born so i hope you guys like this as much as i do and please check out my facebook and instagram to see more of my art and i will see you in my next video bye